as working with network shares in macOS is at best only functional, we're going to try and improve the experience by using an Apple script. Apple script is a computer language that, while simple for humans to understand, can be used to automate tasks in macOS. So by making a small script that, when run, will perform a number of tasks, hopefully we will end up with a more user-friendly experience when we open our network shares. Unlike when we open a network share in Finder, when we run our script, the script first checks to see if our file server is contactable from the network that our computer is connected to. If it is not, then we will receive a notification that our attempt to mount our network share has not been successful, which is something that we find particularly useful when we're working away from home using our VPN connection. Let's run the script again, but this time with our computer connected to our home network. As our script has detected our file server, it displays a window showing us the IP address of our NAS, along with a list of the network shares that we can connect to. By selecting one of the shares from the list and choosing OK, our computer will then mount that share and send us a notification that the share is available. As we prefer to keep our desktop clutter free, when we finish working with the network share, we like to dismount our computer from that share. So during the day, we will often use our script multiple times in order to access different network shares. However, if we need to access more than one network share, if when we run our script, we hold down the command key and use our mouse pointer to select the shares that we want to open, when we press OK, the shares that we've highlighted will appear on our desktop. Let's open Script Editor and take a look at the code that we need to use. If we open Launchpad and locate and select the Other folder, inside Other we will find Script Editor. When we open Script Editor, we are presented with an area where we can type the code for our script. However, as we are not very good at programming, and to avoid making mistakes, we're going to copy and paste our code. If you would like to create your own script, you will find a copy of this code on our website which we have linked to in the description to this video. The code that we are using has over time been cobbled together from multiple sources on the internet, but is basically divided into three sections which we have documented. The first section of code checks to see if our file server is contactable. It does this by sending a ping to our server, then if the script receives a reply, it will try and execute the next section of code. However, if our script does not receive a ping response, it will stop trying to execute any more code and inform us that we have a problem with our server. In this section of the script, you will need to enter the local IP address of your file server, or if you're using a DNS server, its host name. While we recommend that you use the host name that you've given to your file server, we recognize that most home users don't run their own DNS server. So we're going to use the IP address to our file server. If we locate and highlight the words enter address for your NAS and replace them with the IP address for our file server, we can move on to the second section of the code. The second section of our code simply makes sure that our network shares will be displayed as icons on our desktop, so this part of the code will not need to be amended. The final section of code will display a list of the network shares that we can mount. However, for this to work, we will need to once again enter the address of our file server. If we locate the text, enter address of your NAS, which you will find in quote marks next to mount volume. By highlighting the text after the quote marks, you will need to type smb colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of your file server. Finally, so that the notification message makes sense, we're going to amend its text so that the name of our network appears in the notification message. We're now ready to test that our script works. However, if you have the firewall on your file server enabled, 
Because the file server will by default block pings, this script may not work properly. So we're going to need to create a rule on the firewall of our file server to ensure that it will respond to pings. For this example, our file server is a Synology NAS. So you may need to adapt what we're about to demonstrate to your particular brand of file server. If we first open a terminal and type ping, then the IP address of our file server. As you can see, when we press enter, our file server does not respond to pings. While you might be concerned about opening the firewall on your file server to ping requests, the risk to your file server is very low. However, to minimize security exposure, we are going to configure our firewall to only respond to ping requests from devices on our home network. If we open Disk Station Manager and log into our NAS with our administrator's credentials, from the desktop, we need to open Control Panel and select Security. Now on the Security panel, by choosing Firewall, we can edit our firewall profile to allow our NAS to respond to a ping. After selecting Edit Rules, we need to create a new firewall rule. Under Ports, we need to choose Custom. Then for Protocol, we need to select ICMP, which stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. After selecting OK, we're going to limit which devices our NAS can respond to. So we need to select specific IP and set the IP range to that of our home network. You may have noticed that the IP range that we've set is our DHCP IP range and not the whole IP range of our home network. After selecting OK, under Action, we now need to check that our rule is set to Allow and choose OK to create the rule. Finally, in our list of rules, we need to ensure that our new rule is above the Deny All rule. When we select OK, our new rule will be set. If we once again open our terminal, we can now test that our rule is working by trying to ping our NAS. Once again, if we use the ping command, followed by the IP address of our NAS, we now receive a ping response. Let's run our new script to test that it works. You will notice that when the script runs, Script Editor will tidy the formatting of the code. With confirmation that our script works, if we select File and Save, we're going to save our script to our desktop. Now if we once again select File, but this time choose Export, we can turn our script into an application. This is done by simply changing file format from Script to Application, and making sure that code signature is set to Sign to Run Locally. When we select Save, a small application is created. If we now try and run this application, we will be prompted to allow our script to have access to documents and data in Finder. After choosing OK, our script will run. As the icon for our new application looks very generic, we need to make it stand out. So we're going to give our new app its own icon. To do this, we will need a .png image, which we can either create ourselves or download from the internet. If we right click on our script application and from the quick menu choose Get Info, an info panel will open. We now need to take our .png image and drag it into the icon above Add Tags. 
The icon for our application will now change. As our new application is currently saved to our desktop, we're going to move it and create a shortcut in the dock. If we open Finder and select Macintosh HD, we will find a folder called Users. When we select Users, we will see all of the user profiles that we've created on our computer. If we select the user profile that we're currently logged in with, we will be presented with all of the folders relating to that profile. We will now need to create a new folder, which is where we will store any new applications and scripts we create. As we've already created a scripts folder for the other scripts we've created, we're simply going to move our new application into our scripts folder. Now by simply dragging and dropping the scripts folder onto our dock, we have quick access to the network script application. However, as we have more than one application, these icons are overlaid on each other. So if we right click on these stack script icons and from the quick menu choose folder, now when we open the scripts folder in the dock, our scripts will be displayed more neatly. It's worth noting that we now have a record as to when we last connected to our network shares. So if we open Notification Center, we will be presented with a stack of notices that relate to the opening of our shares. Finally, if you're using macOS 13, you may have noticed that you do not receive a banner notification if the script is unable to ping your file server. While previous versions of macOS did not have this problem, the simple solution for now is to change the notification from a banner to an alert. Let's first tidy our desktop by closing Script Editor. Also, we can either delete the file containing our code or save the file to a location on our computer. If we now open System Settings and from the sidebar choose Notifications, while well, we have to allow notifications when mirroring or sharing the display in order for notices to appear in our screen capture, you will just need to scroll through the list of application notifications and find your network script. After selecting your script, by changing the allow notifications from banners to alerts, you will find that the next time you run your script and the script fails to ping your file server, you will receive a notification informing you that you have a problem. However, unlike a banner that disappears over time, an alert notification will need to be manually closed.